right, so today we're here at a commercial farm and we're gonna let Tom cover a little bit about how commercial houses work and what operates and makes these efficient and um, our industry so great. Okay, folks, so we're gonna talk summertime right now since hot weather's here. Everybody that's got commercial chicken houses is worried about hot weather. I don't care whether you grow pullets or breeder hens or broilers like what these houses are. You know, we've got to be concerned from now until the weather cools off this fall about how we prevent heat stress on our chickens, how we keep these guys alive. So we're at one end of the chicken house right now. We're at the end where the cool cells are. And what you're looking at is a, is a section of cool cell pads and uh, the water system that trickles water through those pads and recirculates the water. That's what all of this system is. We've got the sump here. We've got the line that runs along the top that sprays the water out that trickles down through the pad and wets the pad. We reclaim it down here. So how this works whenever we're running the cool cell pad, cool cells are at one end of your house. Fans are at the other end of the house. We'll get to the fans here in just a little bit. But on this end where the cool cells are, you have to match however many feet of cool cell you have with however many CFM fan capacity you have on all of those tunnel fans. The two have to work together to make sure you've got the static pressure in that house right. And how you do that is match up however many cubic feet of cool cell pads you've got with the number of tunnel fans you've got. I don't care whether they're 48 inch fans, 52 inch fans, 54 inch fans. Each one of those fans are rated at a certain number of CFM capacity that it, it can pull and we match that CFM capacity up with how big of a hole, how big of an opening we have with this cool cell setup. Now you see one side of this house. This cool cell pad is on this side of this house. On the other side of the house, there's just as much cool cell pad over on that side of the house. So you may have 65 feet of pad, you may have 80 feet of pad, you may have 100 feet of pad, you may have more than that, it just depends on what size your house is, how wide, how long, how many fans you've got down there on the other end. We can either run water through this thing or not run water through this pad. They are called evaporative cool cell pads for a reason. They do need to dry out. They, the water needs to evaporate off that pad. You don't want to keep this pad wet from nine o'clock in the morning until nine o'clock at night. It works better if you trickle a little water through it, let the water shut off, let that pad dry off a little bit. If you keep it wet all the time, the humidity level in that house is going to be 90, 95%. And that's hard on those chickens. It's not just heat. It's not just hot weather that kills chickens. It's the combination of heat and humidity. And the higher that humidity gets inside the house, the harder it is for those chickens to relieve body heat that they have on the inside. They've got, they don't sweat like we do. They've got to respire all that heat out. And if they're expiring out 100% humidity air and they're trying to suck back in 90 or 95% humidity air that you've got inside that chicken house, that's hard for those chickens to do. They're working really, really hard and then they're panting, but they're not getting rid of much body heat because the air they're trying to breathe in is just about as saturated as the air they're trying to put out. It works better if you let the house get a little warmer and a little drier and let that chicken do a little bit more good in terms of 100% humidity air out, maybe 65% humidity air back in instead of 90 or 95% humidity air back in. So that helps that chicken. So that's a little bit on how the cool cell part of it works. And we'll move to the other end and talk about fans here in just a little bit. All right, so me and Tom got our exercise and walked the length of the house. So we'll show you this end of the house and Tom can cover what these fans do. So we're at the other end of the house, like Jessica said. There's different ways folks have their fans set up depending on how their house style is. You know, you can see that we have some on the sidewall we have fans all the way across the end wall. We also have two more fans on that other side wall that you don't see. Different folks have the setups differently. Some folks have them all across the end wall. Some folks do not have any fans across the end wall. They have half of them on one side wall, half of them on the other side wall. Doesn't make any difference how your setup is. Again, as long as you've got matched up the cool cell space at the other end of the house, and the CFM capacity on all your fans at this end of the house. These fans all 
pull air out. They do not push air in. They do not suck air in. They're shoving air out. So they're pulling the air through the house from the cool cell pads at the other end of the house because that's where the opening is. And they pull it all the way down the house in a tunnel. The house is just basically a long 400, 500, 600 foot tunnel, however long your house happens to be. That's how long that tunnel is that you're pulling. So all of these fans always exhaust air. They, they do not push air into the house. A chicken house is not a positive pressure system. It's a negative pressure system. So these fans are always exhausting. Now, depending on how hot it is outside, how big your birds are in the house that day, will determine how many of these fans are running. They may all be running. There may not be but one or two of them running. It just depends on how big the chickens are, what the temperature in the house is doing, and what your controller is turning on and off to make those fans work. Again, hot weather with big chickens, you may have every fan you've got in the house running 24 hours a day to try to keep those chickens cool. Again, your cool cell pad at the other end it's cycling on and off. It doesn't always have water going through it. The fans are always pulling air through that pad, but that pad is not always wet. So in this case, whenever we've got all of these fans going in this house, we may be pulling 0 0.05, 0 0.06, 0 0.07 static pressure. You don't want the static pressure to be too high whenever you've got all your fans running. The higher the static pressure is, the harder those fans are having to work. So you don't want to get a 0.2, a 0.25, a 0.3 static pressure. That means those fans are having to work really, really hard. And if you've got pressure that high, you've got something a little bit out of whack. Either you've got too many fans or not enough cool cell space, not enough opening for the fans to pull that air through. So you have to be aware of that. Monitor your static pressure. Monitor what that house temperature is doing. Monitor what the humidity level in that house stays all of those things are important but again a summertime system is basically your fans and your cool cell pads and your controller that controls how many of those fans are on at a certain amount of time whether there's water trickling over that pad or not that's the system we use to keep chickens alive in the summertime all right so we showed you the cool cell on one end of our house we showed you the tunnel fan fans on the other end of the house and if you'll tune in next week, we'll take a sneak peek inside. Hail State!